Hi, Simon Trezillian. As you know, I'm a former Special Forces operator. And a lot of things have been going on uh, very negatively uh, in, the, in the news. Uh, we've seen the Paris shootings, and we saw the very unfortunate shootings in San Bernardino just a few days ago. A lot of people have been um, talking and connecting with me and asking what the solution is and what my opinion is on gun control and a whole range of things. So I want to create a couple of videos. This is the first of them. In the first video, we're going to talk about this whole aspect of weaponry and people using weapons. The second one, I'm going to show you what you could do legally to be protecting yourself and that of others should that situation occur and you're there. The third one will be talking more on the legal aspects of the Constitution and militia and some of my ideas of how we could actually create a balance here. So first of all, we're talking about guns. Okay? We're talking about handguns, specifically handguns. Now this is a legally owned, registered, approved, legally purchased firearm. It's a Smith & Wesson 40 caliber. This is a weapon. It's also a tool. Now, this is what the problem is all about. There it is. There's the weapon. There's the thing that is creating all the problem. Look at that bad boy go. Look at the devastation it is causing. Look at the problems it is causing right now. You see, the fact of the matter is, in order for this to do its job, a number of things have to happen. A person has to actively put bullets, rounds, into the magazine. They have to load that magazine. They have to pull the slide back to load into the chamber. They will then have to place their eyes on the sights and pull the trigger. Pull the trigger will create the round to explode out of the barrel and go towards its target. So there's a number of things a human being has to do to actually make that gun work. The gun does not work on its own. The gun is not the problem. Now, a number of people use those guns. There are three groups of people, in fact, probably four groups of people. The first is the military, so they're trained and they're regulated in order to be able to utilize firearms effectively. Law enforcement are also trained and legally allowed to carry firearms and use them in an aggressive manner. The third group are criminals. They operate outside the law, that's why they're often called outlaws. They use firearms as well and terrorists will use firearms. So we have this divide of the military and law enforcement, criminals and terrorists. The guns do not change at all. Only the intent changes. So the gun in itself is not necessarily evil. In the hands of a police officer, it's likely to save lives. In the hands of a military man, it's likely to gain you victory for your cause or your country. In the hands of a criminal, it's going to be creating some very negative outcomes for other people. And of course, as we've seen in the hands of a terrorist, it becomes a devastating tool as well. Now, the fact is, is that in these shooter situations, you find that the person is under a great deal of stress and they will come out and there is a limited amount that they can actually fire. There's a limited amount of ammunition in the weaponry. There's a limited amount of ammunition that you can carry. So that is handguns. This is a samurai sword. Now, this is a live blade. It's very, very sharp indeed. Now this does not take any aspect of magazines, all I have to do is to hold it effectively and go. So if we were in a shooter situation, I could actually take out as many people as I wanted to with this without actually having to reload. And I'll keep on going, cutting down as many people as I can until such time as I run out of steam or I run out of power. That's what happens with a sword. Now anyone can buy a sword. 
Anyone can learn to use a sword. Is the sword evil? Not at all. You use it for, for ceremonial purposes. You can actually use it for combat as well. The sword itself is not necessarily evil. It's merely the intent that goes along with it. So if we ban handguns, what do we do with swords? Do we ban swords? Do we ban knives? What about this? It's a hammer. Go to Home Depot, anyone can buy this. A six-year-old could buy this. In the hands of a person with intent, I could actually use this to nail together a baby's cot, or I could actually use it to harm someone as well. The hammer does not change, only my intent changes. So as we've seen with the handgun, as we've seen with the sword, as we've seen with the hammer, there is one constant, me. The gun is not the problem, the sword is not the problem, the hammer is not the problem, I'm the problem. So it comes down to my intent of who I am. Am I the person in the McDonald's queue when a shooting occurs that I am an armed citizen and I bring out that and I apply that? I'm the good guy. If I'm in the opposite way and I'm the shooter, I'm the bad guy. The gun itself doesn't change, but my intent does. So we don't have a gun problem in America. We have a people problem. Because what happened when guns weren't around? Guns have only been around for the last 200 years. People were killing each other with sticks and stones and swords and knives. If people want to kill people, they will kill them. And we've seen this throughout the centuries. This is a people problem. And therefore, instead of detracting and trying to say it's this and it's that, we need to start looking at ourselves. We need to see who and what these people are actually doing. So that in itself, I believe, is a very, very important point that we have to get to grips with. Is it a mental illness process? Is it anger? Is it lack of jobs? Hell, people are even saying it's climate change. But the fact of the matter is that one constant is that it affects people. People need to change in order for the situation to change. Are they going to change? We don't know. Are you going to change a terrorist because you change the laws? Probably not. They're already working outside the law. Are you going to change a criminal because of the law? They already are outside of the law. So that is where we are right now. Let's, let's take away this thing about guns being bad. Let's look at people being bad, because we are bad. What we have to do is secure ourselves against the bad people. And the only way that will happen is for good people to step up.